Welcome to all you Zoomies to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Tonight, we're going to tie a bullet head stonefly. Try to unlock a few of the mysteries of the bullet head. Hi there, I'm Al Beatty. This lovely lady is my wife of 28 years. Wedding anniversary was yesterday. But anyway, we uh, will move into the presentation. But first, let's talk about books. Yep, we sell the darn things. And that's how we managed to finance all this craziness that we call Zoom. You can see we've got several there, two, four, six, seven. Anyway, there's uh, about 10 of them. You'll find them on btsflyfishing.com. That's our website. Or you can contact me at lbd2 at gmail.com. And of course, all of our books are available on Amazon. Just go to Amazon and type Gretchen BD Books, and that'll get you there. But anyway, back here. Now let's take a look at the materials that we're going to be using tonight, and then we'll uh, explain a little bit how we're going to be using them. All right. Well, I've got poly yarn, black, orange, orange thread. Let me just set that over at the vise. I've got a couple of kinds of deer hair. I've got squirrel tail, and we have rubber leg material and hooks. Not a heck of a lot that we have to deal with here. And what are we gonna do with those? Let's go to the R camera. We're gonna use them on this bullet head stone fly. And the, 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 fly, the hooks that I'm using tonight are dry fly. They're size 10. However, we typically tie this in sizes six through 12 because it's gonna be an extended body fly. The thread's gonna be orange or whatever color you want it to be. The extended body is going to be orange poly yarn and some black and we're going to spend a little bit of time on that because we're going to be furling. You're going to learn about double, triple furling, mixing a double and a single and a few other things like that. Wings. They can be deer, elk, or squirrel hair, and I'll probably do a little bit of both. The bullet head is spun and flared deer or elk hair. Rubber legs. Just plain old rubber leg material, but we have a foolproof way to keep the leg on the offside exactly the same length as the one on the near side. And of course, the uh, head and collar is, is orange. It's one of the few times that I use 3-0 thread instead of 6-0, and that's for bullet heads. And I'm just gonna put a, just a very short thread base there at the front of the hook. And I'm gonna put on a half hitch. And I want you to notice how I'm I'm, I'm not holding my half hitch up down straight. I'm holding it slightly forward so that I can be certain that that pulls in tight right there, directly behind the hook eye. Okay, well, I'll just uh, get myself some materials. I'll start with just a chunk of this um, poly yarn. Okay, let's talk about deer hair. Most of you probably have heard this spiel before but we're going to go through it again for those that that don't know about it right now i'm holding a picture of a complete deer skin i want you to notice the dark hair area right down the backbone it kind of extends a little further into the area in the middle of the hide but for the biggest part it's uh, pretty dark all the way along the the backbone that's this hair right here i want you to also notice that the dark hair at the tips migrates and is dark all the way down to the to the hide. Yeah, it gets a little bit lighter down here, but it's still fairly dark all the way through here. And in fact, you can see that, let's see if you can see, probably two thirds of the hair fiber is fairly dark material, dark gray or even black out on the tips. On the other hand, here's a piece of of hide from the same animal. I want you to notice that right up here closer to the backbone, close to this piece right here, you can see that eh, it's still fairly dark, but as we get further down into the rib area, it gets lighter and lighter. The tip ends are still pretty much the same, but the length of the fiber that has the light gray in it is much more. I would say 60% dark, maybe 70% dark in the one in my left hand. And it starts at about 50% dark right here. 
And as we work our way this way, it becomes probably closer to 70% light. Light hair is for spinning. We'll need that for bullet heads tonight. But if we decide to put a deer hair wing on our stonefly, we'll need this from the backbone for the wing. But we'll start with this for the, for the bullet head. Now, I am going to cut a piece off and then I'll move off camera to get rid of all the waste, but we'll talk about that waste. The, how much hair do you need? Well, a bullet head takes almost twice the volume of hair as you would in a hair wing. Let's move over here to the, to the S camera, Gretchen. <clears throat> okay, I'll just grab all this hair right here out on the tips. And you can see that we have lots of waste fuzz and stuff just getting ready to fall there. Well, remember that fly that I showed you that had a pretty good distribution? And the one that didn't have such, such good distribution. Well, I'll just set those down. I'll show you the process that I went through to get the one that has the better distribution. <clears throat> First off, I run my finger up and down through the waist ends to work out the fibers. We'll put this in the stacker now, but first we want to decide, is that enough hair to do the job? Well, you've seen me do this for hair wings before, and what we want at least one and one half times as much as we would for a hair wing fly. Well, the way we do it for a hair wing fly is just like we do for the bullet head. We gather it with my left hand. I come in with my right hand, slightly different direction and gather, gather the material again gather, 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 pinch. And it should be, get that broken tip one out of there, and it should be a, about equal to the gap of the hook plus another half. We'll see if that looks about that. And that looks, look it up on the screen, that looks pretty close. We'll find out when we spin it, whether it's good or not. And we'll put it in our stacker and even the tips. Reach in here with my scissors now with the left hand and whack those off. And I'm gonna do that down over my waist bin. I will just set it in place here. Okay, now we're getting ready to let go with the right hand and pull with the left. And that's, how it then you just go ahead and wrap it into place and without even looking we'll just take a look here and see whether we got a pretty good distribution let's make sure we get the, the hook eye in the center of all that okay and we've got some weak areas right down in here on the on the, on the bottom part of the of the hook well let me let me back up i can view that just as easily from the back and if you look real careful you can see that there's more hair here than there is down here on the bottom. What I'm going to do now is relax the turns here just a little bit and start pulling that around. Now I'll tighten that back up again. That's a much better distribution. One of the things you have to look, be very careful of, let me zoom in on this. There we are. Now we're, I want you to notice that there's some fibers here that are kind of crisscrossy, I call them. They're sticking down when they should be kind of angling up. And we want those evenly distributed the way See how we're just kind of pulling that all out around there? Okay, I'm going to switch to orange thread. We'll worry about the bullet head in a while. Anyway, let's get back here now. We're going to do an extended body. And we're going to use a technique called furling. Now let's start here with um, the orange. <clears throat> and I'm just going to demonstrate it with a full bundle. And what is furling for those of you that don't know? Well, all it is, 
is twisting a piece of material and allowing it to, to fold back over itself and twist up. And a, and a prime example is, um, is a rope. A rope is made through the furling process. It's just a number of strands are furled at the same time. Well, let me um, just give you, you know, a, a demonstration on, on what it looks like. I'll uh, just grab part of this and stick the stick a, a, a electronic test clip on it. And I want you to notice that I'm twisting this up real tight. Now I'm going to fold this back over. And when I let go, it furls up into a kind of an extended body. I would tie that, tie that down and it would do a great job of floating. Let me just back away from this for the, for the moment. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to get rid of part of this. I'll just get a small portion of that bundle because we're going to furl it not once, but we're going to furl it several times. And what, by the way, just in case you're interested, at some point in time, we're going to do a seminar on how we make our leaders and we make our leaders by furling them with an electric drill. And um, what you're going to see here in just a moment is a triple, uh, a double furl and a triple furl. And that's how we do a leader. That's how you take a piece of four pound monofilament and make a butt section is by triple furling. Okay, now I'll just lay that aside. And I've got a real snarled up mess here, but that's all right. We'll straighten it out. Anyway, uh, we'll get back to the leaders at another time, but just and then when you want to do, anyway, when you want to do the middle section, instead of furling a, a triple furl, you do a double furl. And then down to a single furl, down to a, just a, a single strand. And that's how we make our leaders. And, but we'll, we'll get into that at another time. Okay, here we go. And now I have this fairly long strand here. And I am going to have to attach my electronics test clip so, clear out at the end and it's going to be off camera you're not going to be able to see it i, I took the the poly and grabbed it in with my electronics test clip well, first we're going to do a single furl and i'll just hold that out straight behind off camera you won't be able to see it and i'll just twist until it's really twisted up good okay you can see it right here starting to crinkle where yeah, I better find I better find one closer to the that the camera can actually pick up okay right in here and right here you're starting to see a little divot there where it's getting twisted so tight that it's wanting to curl back over itself and that's what we're going to do right now is fold it back over and let it furl up Yeah, you can see how that, uh, what that looks like right there. Well, let's set that aside and tie that off. All right, there we go. Snagged a couple of hairs and they don't want to get with the program, so we'll get rid of them. All right, now we have this, a single furl, Pretty nicely done. And now I'm going to come in with my electronics test clip and again grab the end come on I'll quit shaking okay there we go and I cannot I cannot twist the same way I did before because I'm untwisting it I have to go the opposite direction so I'm twisting it up again and you can see it's getting really tight. And now I'm going to fold that back over. And now you get a, a, a tighter furl, if you will, by doing it that way. Or you can mix colors. Well, let's just undo this a little bit. We'll let that undo. And let's get a piece of black. We're going to do a single furl 
black with a triple furled orange. And believe me, you can triple and double furl and blend together all you want to. It's just, it's fun just playing with the furling process. Okay, there's a, a bundle of black. I'll just cut off the kind of fuzzy ends here. All right, tie that on there. Now, <clears throat> if I furl this and lay it back over itself, I'll have two doubled furled. Or I can just take a, a single strand of this and a and just capture them like that. And let's just start twisting those. And now let's lay things back over. And you get kind of a cool looking bar down each side of the extended body. And we're gonna just use that tonight. But if you had gone the other way, double furled, uh, furled things together, I mean, the options are almost limitless. It's just, it can be a lot of fun with the different things you can come up with, but who would have ever thought all this twisting together, you'd end up with a body that has a line down one side and flip it over and it's got a line down the other side. Yep. Now we're at the point of deciding what we're gonna do for wings. We've got options. We can use some of this right here. In fact, I'll put a temporary wing by using some of that darker deer. Okay. Now how much do we need in a hair wing? Well, we gather, 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 press equal to the hook gap. And that's just about what we got right there. So now let's get ready to tie that on the on the hook. And I'll measure it. I want it to be just slightly longer than the body. I'll cut the waist off even. See how I'm letting that set right in there. And I'm going to snug this down before I really bail into it. So it doesn't flare all over the place and cause me trouble. Okay, and you've seen an awful lot of stone flies that look just like that. And they're beautiful. And we could swing our bullet head back, but I think I want a squirrel wing on this one. So I'm just gonna take that one off. All right, now we're gonna use some squirrel. I had two of them there. I got a little bit of fox squirrel. I'll um, cut off a piece of that and work with it. Now the same fellow that showed me the trick we're gonna learn here on the legs here in a few minutes, showed me this what this trick and it works mostly with uh, with squirrel but i measure that for length and i'm going to cut off the extra here i'll just get how are you doing there dear <laughs> maybe, maybe you ought to go get a band-aid on that okay well anyway i'm going to not just lash it down like i did before i'm going to take a turn around the bundle this is really important Okay, now I'll pull that back just a little bit. Got to do that again. Okay. Now, as I tighten that up, remember we've got the, the bundle around, the, the, the wrap around the bundle. Okay, let me uh, trim off. Got too long in here. Okay, good. I'll just wrap into there. Whoops.
Now, here's what that young fellow showed me. We were, at a, just to tell you the story, we were at this show in Logan, Utah, oh, right after we moved to Bozeman. It must have been about 94, 95, something like that. And sitting next to me at this show was uh, one of the shop tires for one of the local fly shops. I, can't, I wish I could remember his name because I'd like to give him credit for this in the, in the rubber leg trick. But anyway, he was doing exactly what we did. And I want you to, to watch something here that happens. As I push down right on top with my thumb, that wrap around the bundle of hair allows me to cup the squirrel over the body. It's not, it's, it's, and when I don't quite get it the way, totally the way I want, I can pull it out there because it's just kind of a, it's almost like a pivot point. Just one of those fun things you can do that really don't make a doggone bit of difference and the fish couldn't care less, but whatever that's worth. Now it's time to fold back our, our bullet head and get back to what the, the part we just put on there a little bit ago. There, there's options. I'll show you some tools that I've got that I've had for, for years and years. Here's a, here's a tool and another one very similar and all it's, all it does is push all those fibers back so that you can get your thread around it. Nothing more than a washer with um, some 3 32nd neoprene glued to the back and a hole cut. And I just used a, a punch from my leather working tools to cut holes in six of them. Each one of these are a different size and I'll put these down. This one looks like it might be just about right. Let's see if I can pull this aside. I know I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll turn my vise. I want you to see that you can see the hair pulled back. You can find out whether they're all lined up or not. Putting on the rubber legs. <clears throat> Cannot tell you how many times I've seen people do this, myself included, for a whole bunch of years. I'll just stick that one between my fingers over here and hold one. They'll tie the leg on one side. And then they'll get the other one. And with a little practice, you get pretty darn good at it. But it's still, this one here needs to be cut off just a little bit. So you cut it off. Oh, okay, I got to cut off the back. Oh, that's not quite right. And the next thing you know, none of your legs look the same. Well, let me show you how to make them so they always look the same. And this is thanks to that young fellow that was a shop tire in Logan, Utah. I know it's a darn sorry way to give him credit, but my aging memory is, I've forgotten. Okay, so I've got those all nice and even. Just bundle those together. Tie them right on top. Take the one that goes to the offside and pull it over there. Pull this one over here, you're done. Always perfect. I know that's too simple. Anyway, <clears throat> we'll just give this a little whip finish. Now we're gonna talk about that whip finish. That is a little different than the whip finishes you've seen before. They all started at the back of the head and worked their way forward. And we called them, there was good whips and bad whips. This one's called a stack whip. And I'm going to, I'm just gonna cut these legs off right there. So they're not in my way. So we can illustrate the point. We don't care about the legs at this point. <clears throat> we wanna talk about stack, the stack, um, the stack wrap or the stack whip finish. <clears throat> and I'm gonna get a, Whip finish tool out here. And <clears throat> zoom in. So those of you that are a little bit on the motion sickness side, let this let let the vice settle down or the camera settle down. No, oh, focus is a little bit out. Okay, good. Thank you, Gretch. 
Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to start in the front, ah, the front of the collar, and wrap back about three turns. Now we're going to come forward another three turns right back over those that we just wrapped back so that we end up at the front of the collar. And now we'll pull that up. And now we've got what I call a stack whip finish. Maybe it has another name and I'm just making up names. But anyway, let's uh, back away from that. And that gives you a completed stonefly. Used the bit from one fourth socket set. I don't recall where I found the bit set. Oh, John Correct uses the bit from a four, one fourth inch socket set. Okay, the bit, the, bit. the bits from a one fourth inch socket set. Um, I'm John, explain to me a little bit what you're talking about. I, I love the sound of it, I just don't quite understand. Is that how you fold the, the bullet heads back? John Kareff? Well, I, I guess he's not here right now. So anyway, there I is- am, uh, Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I had my, I've tried to use my space bar. I use um, like a 10 millimeter, 12 mil millimeter and just push it over the top, just like you did with the other. But the reason oh, okay. I like that is because if I'm tying different size flies, then I can scale up or down depending upon how much deer hair I need to push back. Well, that's in, in it. Did you get them from Harbor Freight or someplace like that? I got them from my garage. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, I'll have to. I'll have to um, check out your garage. Check here. out my garage. I know I don't have that. Harbor Freight, my, my other place for fly tying tools is Harbor Freight. 